Hey, good morning everyone. This is Raf with Compose again, coming to you with a, a new video. In the last video, I showed you the new file system in the Compose 3.0 platform. And uh, I posted that video online on the community page and got a lot of great feedback. I really appreciate all the comments, suggestions, and tips. And um, I've actually made a few changes uh, since then uh, based on those tips. So I wanted to show you a couple of those um, now. Uh, so the first thing is uh, Stoman or Stefan suggested that there be a an, an ability to select multiple tracks at once, right? Something like you would see in Gmail. So currently in Composed, you know, uh, the current platform, you have to select each one of these individually. But now you can select the first one, come down to the last one. Let's say I want to select all these guitar tracks. I can hold my shift key down. Obviously, you can't see me doing that. But I'm going to hold the shift key down and when I select the last one it selects all of those tracks in that range. So I thought that was a really great suggestion and incorporated that immediately. The other thing we did was that, um, and this also came from uh, Stoman, which was a volume um, control on the track player. So you can see now when I click play and I go through this, decrease volume and it will remember the last volume setting. So here I've got it pretty low. When I go to my tracks list page and I play from here, you'll see there's also a volume control. It's over on the bottom right um, and it remembers where it was. So that hopefully will save some ear balls. And let's see, the third change that I made, which was, uh, this was brought up by Heinz57 or Thomas Heinz. He pointed out a very good point. Um, uh, I had in the previous video shown that you could change the track colors for each of the track types and um, he pointed out well you're gonna have a lot of different users on this system and they're all gonna have their different track color preferences and it's gonna get very confusing because you might get used to green for guitar and somebody else uses purple for guitar and so I, I took that um, advice and made a standard color palette across Compose for, for track types. So now that when you upload a track and you say that it's a guitar, it's always going to be green. Um, if you upload a bass, it's always a darker green. I tried to make uh, string instruments all have a similar color palette. You can see they're all kind of greens. Uh, mandolins, uh, another shade of green. Um, although violins are not, that's brown. But uh, yeah, I need to kind of work on the color palette. But, but that's the concept. So um, great suggestions. So what I want to show you next is, and this is where I left off in the last video, is here's our demo project that we created. I've got all these great tracks. Really was hoping for a banjo track and even keyboards. That would be awesome. Didn't get it. Um, so what do you do? So now with in the track overview page, um, I pointed this out last time, there is a create track request button. And a track request is exactly what, what you might think. It's a request for a track. So you, you click that and you specify the track type and you can see all the kind of colors that I've um, applied. And so what's nice about, you know, I just mentioned the track coloring is that it's gonna be throughout the entire site. So even when you request a track, um, it'll be the same kind of color coding. So anyways, um, I'd like a banjo. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on banjo. And what I would do here is type in a short description uh, this will show up in any listings. So, would love a banjo for this rockabilly rock a uh, rock a Billy tune. I still can't spell that right. Uh, let's see here, rock with a K. Okay, and then here you might put in further descriptions. So this is more details. Like for example, I might say. Um, would like the banjo to begin at 2.0 or you know two minutes and 10 seconds into the song during the bridge and you can put all sorts of details in here um, you can put uh, um, any sort of creative notes that you might want to hear special instructions I am only accepting wave files something like that okay so then you continue. Now, here's the next thing. This is kind of the cool feature, which is um, I can now attach tracks to this request, and these tracks will be provided to the 
other members who are looking at your request so they know exactly what needs to be downloaded to work on your particular project. So I click on here, I, I see my same drive system that I have for the, um, for the project, and I don't want to, let's say, give access to all my steps to everybody on, on Compose, whether they're members or, or even just visitors. Um, but obviously they need something to work on this banjo track. So I'm gonna provide them with um, this, this mix that I did, right? So, um, and so what, what will happen now is that'll be attached to the request. When they go to the request, they can download that, but they can't see any other tracks. Now, um, I did see some comments on about this particular topic on the uh, forum. Some people were saying, hey, it's really nice to expose all of your tracks anyways to everyone. It's a great learning opportunity, and I agree with that, and I'm gonna make that optional. The default will be when you create a project, your tracks are not visible. However, um, the way to make them visible is through attachments through a particular track request. So again, I can limit the scope of what's visible to my members. So I'm just gonna give them access to this particular track. And then here's a quick summary. Uh, there's my creative brief that I typed in, the track type, and here's the last piece, which is how long is this request gonna stay open for? Um, right now I have it set for 10 days as a default, but there are other options that you can choose from. So what does this mean? This means that the request will stay open on the site and visible and searchable for this particular period of time. Um, I'm thinking about making the longer periods like 25 and 30 days, maybe even 20 days, um, a premium feature where you have to be a plus pro or premier member to have access to these longer requests. Um, the, the reason for that is um, new members tend to sort of forget or sometimes they abandon their projects. We wanna keep them active. I'm gonna have reminders on the um, your, your studio page, which is your dashboard for any track requests that might be expiring soon. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it to, let me do 10 days and I'm gonna create it. So now it takes me right back to the project overview page. This is the same page you had seen before with the creative brief, uh, the genre, BPM and key. And now I see there is a track request open. So what does that mean? So that means that anytime someone comes to your project, um, they will see this track request. They may not see this tab. Let me actually log out and show you what that looks like. I'm gonna log out here and uh, I can go, just go right back to that project and refresh. And you can see now the tracks tab is gone. I uh, can't see it, but the track request is still there. And if I click on that, it takes me to the details for that track request. I see the attachment, I can download it and so on and so forth. Um, cool, all right, now, there is a tab up here, which I have just started kind of messing around with called track requests. This is the high level sort of page where all track requests end up. So you can see here's the banjo track request that I just created, right? It's part of my demo project, uh, who created it, when it was posted 55 seconds ago. And this little green bar indicates how much time is left. So you can see there's still a whole lot of time left. This one's creeping down a little bit. Um, this one's creeping down even further. It's been posted about a day ago. Um, I can play this track so I can listen to the actual um, mix that was attached, right? There's that. And um, I'm gonna be adding, which I haven't done yet, but a bunch of filtering and sorting options. So if I wanna see just banjo tracks or just guitar tracks, or if I'm a drummer and I just wanna see requests for drum tracks, I'll be able to filter and find those very quickly. So that's track requests. Um, I'm gonna post this on the community page. Looking forward to feedback, comments, suggestions, tips, and all your great suggestions for improvements. Thanks everyone.